come on up where we represented Sight Shield, you're on deck. This is really exciting for me because I think that this demonstrates the uh, true power of city camp. As a first time city camper, um, didn't know what to expect out of the unconference sessions yesterday, but this idea was actually born out of one of the unconference sessions uh, with Noel. Um, this idea that we really don't understand how representative our um, elected bodies are, the populations that they represent. Um, so, what we want to do is take a look at are there disparities in how representative our elected bodies are and do those disparities correlate with community outcomes and make that a little bit more visible to the public um, by compiling demographic data for all North Carolina elected officials and then turning uh, using that data to create a dashboard to visualize, search, scale, compare elected bodies in their communities and then also eventually um, as it gets built out and we work with uh, journalists or university researchers, try to overlay some community impact data sets with the uh, dashboard visualizations that we've created. So if we drill down a little bit, if you're familiar with the open data policing site, uh, we're talking about building something similar, but based on demographic information for all elected bodies, so we're talking local governments, uh, beyond just the, the state level things, and cross-correlating that with local demographics um, so that you can kind of get a visual feel of the extent to which those might disconnect. Uh, this is the kind of tool that can be used by journalists to investigate stories, advocacy groups, researchers, uh, election campaigns, uh, it can help to drive conversations. Uh, as well as individual citizens. So what we're doing is we're using the candidate lists and election results as well as voter registrations, so correlating the voter registration for the winning candidate uh, against uh, the, the uh, Board of Elections data, and then for the demographics for the community using uh, the, the census data. One of the interesting things you can start to do, initially you can just look at is there a disparity maybe uh, come up with some kind of index that says you know, whether, whether there's a, a discrepancy between the representation and the demographics of the community, but you can then overlay. An interesting story was that um, disparities in traffic stop data, the best predictor was the composition of the local board, uh, city council or county commission. So that being able to do that with a wide variety of data sets that start to tell you community impact uh, and whether that might correlate and, and that then drives the investigation. It doesn't necessarily mean one leads to the other. Um, so impact, the ability to highlight potential discrepancies, um, empowering the community, whether it's individual citizens to make better decisions, but even being able to reflect back to the governing uh, commissions, councils, to show them some of this information can actually have an impact and how they, uh, how they think about their own representation. Um, the ability to start initiating some conversations about inclusion and representation. And this is really, you know, the end result of this project is a tool that, like the, the police stop data, becomes a tool that communities can use, journalists can use, uh, in order to kind of investigate impacts that might be coming from a discrepancy between the, the representation and the people that they're represent, representing. Um, sustainability of the project, um, this is volunteer driven. We're probably not going to get rich off of this. Um, but it really doesn't need much in the way of financial resources. Uh, we already have interest from Code for Greensboro, Code for Durham, and Code for Asheville. Um, and then we look to partner with journalists to kind of help promote, but also drive the next level of impact. Uh, and it's something that's relatively straightforward to replicate in other states. Um, we have put in a records request uh, as of now to the State Board of Elections, and if we don't get that in time, we can definitely get it for Buncombe County and Guilford County to build out a prototype 
and we figure from that point, uh, given what we can use uh, that other projects have done, like open data policing, we can get an MVP pretty quickly. So, questions? Um, do you think of uh, representativeness as a fixed concept or something that the person who's investigating this would be able to define for themselves? Um, I, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. So, I might think of representativeness based on race, but I also might uh, think of representativeness based on uh, political party. So, we're limited, because we want to do this at scale, which is part of the power, we're limited to the information that we can we can pull automatically, say, from voter registration data. But that does give us political uh, party affiliation, sex, age, um, and race. Are you speaking only of um, municipal jurisdictions like a city or a town? Are you also considering um, the parts of counties that are policed by sheriff's departments? So, so we're definitely looking at, I, I think the, the goal is all elected positions in the state. Um, so, the obvious ones are county commissions, uh, we've talked about school boards, uh, you know, municipal councils, but it can also go down, and, and this is less bodies, but there are, the judges are elected in many cases. There are other offices, and this starts to drive the, the, the discussion around how the representativeness of our elected officials might impact the kinds of policies that happen and what, what outcomes result. Do you have an example story of when knowledge on the data of discrepancies between representativeness, as you defined it, has made an impact on a citizen's decision or? We actually had some lively discussion about whether the extent to which this impacted individual citizens versus kind of more broadly, but we therefore went with the community as the term. Um, I think we've seen tremendous impact already from uh, the open data policing and additional investigations came from that. But. Uh, so I actually worked on the, as a data analyst for the Alaska uh, case on gerrymandering and having the data to say how that map had drawn in certain Alaska native populations was where we built the basis of a legal case. And that's what took so much time. And so to have that quickly and say, hey, this is discriminatory. Now you have advocacy uh, organizations and lawyers who are able to come in and say, okay, I can take that data and I can and go and take it to a court system. Um, we were also discussing um, as this scales up, being able to see larger patterns, um, if there is correlation between low representativeness and you know various issues associated with.